Hello dear students, in this video I will continue with the 5th unit which is inferential statistics. In this video I will continue with hypothesis testing and we will see how we can perform small sample test which is t test when the sample observations are given. Now before seeing the example we will have a recap of the procedure for testing the hypothesis using t test. So, the first step is we have to state the hypothesis. We have to state the null and the alternate hypothesis. So, as far as the t-test for one sample is concerned, the null hypothesis is of the form H0 is mu equal to some value mu0. And alternate hypothesis H1 is mu0 equal to mu0. Then, the second step is we have to define the statistic. The test is statistic t. It is given by t equal to x bar minus mu naught upon s by root of n minus 1 where x bar is the sample mean and then mu naught is the population mean this small s it is the sample standard deviation and n is the sample size. So, using all these values we can find the value for the test statistic t. Here we have it in the third step find t and the critical value of t from the table with n minus 1 degrees of freedom at alpha level of significance. So, we have to find the critical value of t from the table where the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 and level of significance is alpha. Then the next step is we have to make the decision to accept or reject H0. We have to compare the critical value of t with the calculated value of t and accordingly we have to make the decision. And finally, we have to summarize the results based on what is asked in the question. So, these are the steps involved in t-test for one sample. Now, this example I have taken from CBC handbook. We will see how to solve this question. It says, let us consider the average rainfall in a given area is 8 inches. However, a local meteorologist claims that rainfall was above average for 2016 to 2020 and argues that average rainfall during this period was significantly different from overall average rainfall. The following is the average rainfall for the observed period of 2016 to 2020. So, the average rainfall for various years it is given here from 2016 to 2020. The value for the average rainfall in inches it is given here. So, this is an example of a sampling distribution. And now here we have the hypothesis. So, a local meteorologist claims that the average rainfall during this period was significantly different from the overall average rainfall. The overall average rainfall is given as 8 inches. So, this is the population mean mu. We have to test whether the average rainfall during this period, whether it was significantly different from the overall average rainfall or not. When the level of significance is not given, then we can use the level of significance alpha as 5 percent. So, here the level of significance is not given. So, let us assume alpha as 5 percent. Assume alpha equal to 5 percent. So, here what we know is n is 5. So, we have observations for 5 years. So, the sample size is 5. n is 5 and the population mean it is 8. Mu naught is 8 inches. So, we know only this much. Apart from this, in the examples that we have seen in the previous video, they have directly given the sample mean and the sample standard deviation, whereas here only the sample observations are given. We have to find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. So, first let us write the hypothesis. Define null hypothesis H0 and alternate hypothesis H1 as follows. So, the null hypothesis is H0 is mu equal to 8 inches and alternate hypothesis H1 is mu naught equal to 8 inches. So, this 
so by seeing the hypothesis we can see that it is a two tailed test thus a two tailed test is applied under hypothesis h not we have t equal to x bar minus nu not upon s by root of n minus 1 or it is x bar minus mu naught upon s into root of n minus 1. Now we do, we do not know x bar and we do not know s. All these we have to calculate from these observations. So first let us find x bar. So let us draw a table where we have xi 8, 5, 7, 5, 6. So these are the sample observations sample observations. So, here summation xi is when we are add all these we get it as 31. So, x bar is summation xi by n. It is 31 by 5 which is 6.2. So, we get x bar as 6.2. And now let us find the sample variance. Sample variance s square. In class 11, we have studied the formula for sample variance as s squared equal to 1 by n into summation xi minus x bar the whole square. But if we want to find the sum of xi minus x bar the whole square, then we need to have 8 minus 6.2 the whole square plus 5 minus 6.2 the whole square plus 7 minus 6.2 the whole square till the fifth year. So, the calculation becomes slightly tedious. So, here to find the sample variance, let us use assumed mean formula. Assumed mean also we have studied in class 11, how to find the variance using assumed mean. So, let us assume di as xi minus the assumed mean which is 5. So, let us assume di as xi minus assumed mean which we take it as 5. So, here we have here 8 minus 5 is 3, 5 minus 5 is 0, 7 minus 5 2, 5 minus 5 is 0 and 6 minus 5 1. So, summation di will be 6 and next we have to calculate di square. di square is square of each of these. So, it is 9, 0, 4, 0, 1. So, now, summation di square is 14. So, having known all these we can find the sample variance. The sample variance it is given by 1 by n into summation di square minus 1 by n summation di the whole square. So, it is 1 by 5 into summation di square is 14 minus summation di the whole square is 6 the whole square which is 36 upon n. n is 5. So, it is 1 by 5 into 14 minus 7.2. Let me continue here. S square is equal to 1 by 5 into 6.8. So, it is 1.36. So, the sample variance is 1.36. We need to have the sample standard deviation. So, it is square root of 1.36. The sample standard deviation is the root of sample variance. Now, let us find the square root of 1.36. In inferential statistics, it is better if we know how to find the square root because now and then we need to find the square root. So, here it is enough if we find the square root up to two decimal places. So, let us add two more zeros here. So, here we have to see the first term. So, it is 1 into 1, 1, 0. Then we have to bring the next pair of digits which is 36 with a decimal point. Now, we have to add this number to this divisor. We get 2 and then we have to fill this place in the divisor so that if we have to have the same number in the quotient also, 
which when multiplied will be close to 36 but less than 36. So here we can have only 1, 21 into 1. Because if we take 22 into 2, it will be 44. It is more than 36. So we, we cannot have 22 into 2. We need to have 21 into 1. It is 21. This is 15. Now bring the next pair of digits. 0, 0. The last number that we wrote as, as quotient should be added to this divisor. To know what is the next divisor. So the next divisor will be 22. We have to fill this place with some number. So that we have to have the same number in the quotient. Which when multiplied will be close to 1500. But less than 1500. So let us try 7. 227 into 7. So, we get more than 1500. So, we have to have 6. 226 into 6. So, we get 1356. Four, four, one. So, the square root of 100... I am sorry, 1.36, it is 1.16. So, root of 1.36, it is 1.16. So, yes is 1.16. So, we got x bar, it is 6.2 and yes, it is 1.16. I have already made a video on how to find the square root of a number. The link is available in the description. Now, let us substitute the values for x bar, yes, mu naught and n and find the value of t. So, this is equal to x bar, we found it as 6.2, 6.2 minus mu naught is 8. Upon the sample standard deviation is 1.16 into root of n minus 1. n is 5, so it is 5 minus 1 which is 4. So, it is root 4. So, this is equal to negative 1.8 upon 1.16 into 2 or it is equal to negative 3.1. Therefore, t equal to negative 3.1. Now, we have to compare this calculated value of t equal to negative 3.1 with the table value for alpha equal to 5%. Degrees of freedom equal to n minus 1, which is 5 minus 1, 4 degrees of freedom. So, if we see the table for alpha equal to 5 percent, since it is a two tailed test, we have the region of rejection on both sides. So, here we have 0 0.025, and here we have 0 0.025 part of the area. Here we have negative 0 0.025 and here positive 0 0.025. So, for area in one tail for 0 0.025 and 4 degrees of freedom, the value is 2.776. So, this is negative 2.776 and this is positive 2.776. Now, let us see the calculated value of T, whether it lies in the region of Rejection or in the region of acceptance. So, we got T 0 0.025 for 4 degrees of freedom as 2.776. But we got the calculated value of T as negative 3.1. So, this negative 3.1, it lies in the region of rejection. So, this is negative 2.776 and this is positive 2.776. This value negative 3.1, it lies somewhere here. So, we have to reject H0. Since T equal to negative 3.1 does not lie in the interval,
negative t 0 0.025 to t 0 0.025 for phi minus 1 equal to 4 degrees of freedom that is negative 2.776 to positive 2.776 we reject h naught since we reject h naught it means there is sufficient evidence that we can support the alternate hypothesis h1 which means the average rainfall during this period it was significantly different from the overall average rainfall so that is the conclusion hence we conclude that average rainfall during this period was significantly different from overall average rainfall so this is the final result so this is how we have to go about when the sample observations are given when the sample observations are given we have to find x bar we have to find the sample standard deviation then we have to substitute them in the formula for t and we have to proceed with the decision and the result i hope this video was useful for you if you have not subscribed to my channel please subscribe Thank you for watching.